Luigi's Mansion had a ghostly spirit that didn't make the cut, and today, we're taking a trip through time to pay them a visit. If you found a time machine, would you use it? Would you take a trip back to an early part in your life to change something about your future? Or would you possibly use it to go straight to E3 in 2001 and get your hands on the Luigi's Mansion demo so you could experience it firsthand in all its glory? I think the choice is obvious. Sadly, we don't have a time machine, but we might have something that works just as well. We're taking a trip back to Luigi's Mansion before it was released, to a time where the mansion looked a lot different. The equipment and ghosts looked a lot different. We're doing this to talk about one ghost in particular that eventually was removed from the game. This is the story of Luigi's Mansion's lost chef and the incredible effort to bring his world back to life. Back in the Stone Age before YouTube and the accessibility of online video platforms, hearing news about your favorite games was a bit different, especially if you had no money. You either booted up IGN in hopes of seeing some new screenshots or clips, or you turned your TV to Tech TV slash G4 and hoped they covered something you were interested in, or at least those were the options I felt I had as a child. Either way, sources felt limited, and beyond that, the quality wasn't too great either. 1080p or even 720p wasn't even a thing nor was it common to have fast internet, so stuff was already double compressed just to be viewable online. But that's what you had, and it's those super compressed IGN images that sort of kick off our story today. So at E3 2001, Luigi's Mansion was revealed to be something more than a tech demo that was shown off in 2000 at Space World. This concept had grown into a full-fledged game. Players were able to play timed demos of the experience and explore different variations of the rooms that we know and love. And that experience, other than random footage that tends to surface on the web over the decades that have passed, is really all we had. Because by the time the game was released a few months later, a lot had changed. The rooms were different. Doors were removed. Luigi's equipment had been altered. Ghosts and ghouls that lurked the halls were reworked, and some were removed altogether. And one ghost that was on the chopping block was the chef ghost. We have one screenshot of the spirit. He's in the kitchen, and he's holding a tomato. This grainy photo is all we have, because few players actually made it to the kitchen area during the demo's time limit, and actually stuck around. So unlike L, where we have no knowledge or proof that it existed in the game, we have definitive proof that the chef existed in the kitchen, and that's pretty cool. I had asked around the Luigi's Mansion modding community, and Portable Productions gave me the following info about the strange ghost in regards to a project they were working on. Quote, so the chef is derived from that one screenshot. And design-wise, we know he used a tomato attack due to his tomato still being present in the game. He throws the tomato, much like the bowling ball ghost throws the bowling ball. This can also be presumed to be true due to the bowling ball model being named Tomato just like the unused tomato. No footage of the final waves of the kitchen have surfaced as of yet, though." End quote. Now, I always loved all the different portrait ghosts within the mansion. They felt like a bit of an outlier compared to the normal world of Mario, at least during that time. But they were still pretty spooky for a kid, especially Grandma. She's terrifying. So of course, I always had interest in the development of these ghosts and the rumors that surrounded them. So to know a ghost was deleted from existence is super interesting to me because the chef is nowhere to be found within the files. Now, we don't know if the chef classified as a portrait ghost or was just a unique enemy encountered in the kitchen and dining areas. But I know a lot of you may also be thinking about the Sapphire Room ghost that was supposedly cut from the game. I always loved that idea too, despite the rumor being fabricated unintentionally by a Nintendo Power writer. Yes, the Safari Ghost never actually existed from what we can tell, and it was just a text blurb joke in Nintendo Power that made us think it was real. Basically, the story of my life. But the chef was real. It wasn't something that was made up. It just got deleted, and all recorded evidence of the ghost has been lost to time. However, that doesn't mean we can't imagine what the ghost could have been like. Because if you don't have a time machine, you could always painstakingly recreate the entire Luigi's Mansion beta experience. And that's what one team of amazing modders has done. It's truly unlike anything I've seen before. And the attention to detail is quite frankly absurd. So now we're taking a trip back in time to the E3 beta mansion experience. And finally coming face to face with a lost chef ghost. So there's something about this recreation mod that just hits different in the nostalgia sense. I know this mansion like the back of my hand, and I always look at it with rose-tinted glasses. But what we have here feels like jumping into a childhood memory that you never actually had firsthand. You remember seeing it, but you've never had a chance to experience it. It was forbidden, which is what makes this super exciting for me. This entire process was a joint endeavor by modders Portable Productions, Slug Motif, LM Finish, Cyrus, and Absolute G. And a trailer for the mod can be found in the description below. 
Now, I won't go into all the nitty gritty details like other creators may when talking about this mod, but just know that every aspect of it mirrors Luigi's old mechanics and how the game operated within the E3 build, despite the modders never having the E3 build in hand. They had to work backwards and recreate what was updated over time. The original demo gave you access to a lot of earlier rooms in the mansion, and presented them in a different order than we are used to. Probably one of the coolest things in my opinion was the old map layout. Rooms still retained their position, but there were doors connecting each room to other rooms and other parts of the mansion. These doors were boarded up in the demo, but they still gave a neat sense of interconnectivity. The foyer and the living room areas, from an environmental standpoint, didn't have a whole lot of differences between the two versions. The foyer's top half gave purpose to its hallway though, because it now had a door on the right side. The vases were a bit different too. Probably the neatest aspect of this for me were the old display and Luigi's functionality though. Luigi can now duck to dodge attacks, and the Game Boy Horror screen now displayed the time of night it was. Knowing the game was supposed to take place in the absolute dead of night was something I guess I never thought of. Like, I knew it was supposed to be late at night, but having an actual time made it feel that much spookier. The coin icon was now spinning on screen too, and the only type of money encountered was coins. You may recognize this spinning coin, as it mirrors the spinning coins that were left out of bounds in each room within the mansion. I made a video on that a long time ago, but the HUD is where these coins are believed to be derived from. The old poltergeist looks different, and can overheat if you use it too long. It's pretty neat. To top things off, you can also swap directly to a water nozzle. The OG Poltergust actually wasn't too far off from being very similar to Flood from Super Mario Sunshine. While continuing on our quest to locate the Chef Ghost, it should be noted that after clearing the living room, you immediately go into the hallway area on the left side of the mansion. The flow of events was different in the beta, and the room you normally enter is boarded up. Heading into Neville's study, you'll encounter a new type of enemy that didn't make the cut. These mini-boos will be encountered near Neville's desk, and were kind of neat since they seemed to be commonplace. Perhaps boos didn't have as big of an involvement in the game as they did in the final version, and they were implemented to make the game feel not as short. I should mention that the flashlight can't be toggled off either, so you have to turn to surprise Neville, but he goes down in one swoop since he only has 50 HP. Heading back into the hallway, we make our way to Lydia's room, which is just called Bedroom 1 in this version. Just like in the beta footage, the room has a different layout compared to how it was in the final game. Two beds, a wardrobe, and a new window on the left side of the mansion. The back window is no longer broken, and Lydia uses her leftover animation to turn around and look at Luigi. That's when you vacuum her up. No need to make her freak out with the wind. And at this point, I started to feel a bit weird, like I had jumped into an old movie. It might sound dumb, but this room being changed just fought against my mental state of how I expected this room to be. I'm not sure how to describe it. Having been in this game over and over again, it wasn't until this room that I felt like I was experiencing the game almost from a different reality. Sounds silly, I know, but I figured I might as well share my feelings for the sake of the video. And things only continued to deviate from there. Having beaten Lydia, I now went to Chauncey's room, but there was no child to be found. Just some old school ghosts whose abilities I hadn't experienced before. I spent so much time dawdling though, that it caught me by surprise when Egas started talking to me when I was picking up the key. I had completely forgotten that the old demo had a 1.30am cutoff time, and even that was recreated spot on. If I was going to reach the chef, I was going to have to be more timely for sure. So this time I rushed through the mansion and grabbed the key from the upstairs room. Since there wasn't a requirement to grab the key from the baby room, I went straight there so I could access the rest of the mansion. After dodging the slamming ghost, I took the key downstairs and opened up the hallway. So something really neat is that the modders also restored an enemy called a basher in the hallway. The ghost would shriek at Luigi and scare him, knocking Luigi to the ground and causing him to scamper away. It was by far one of the most powerful attacks in the game too, because it quite literally scared Luigi half to death. His HP would drop to 50 from 100, and slowly the effect would wear off as his max HP climbed back up but his current health would still be set to 50. Nothing even compares to this in the final game at all, as this is the single most destructive attack in the game. Anyways, like I mentioned earlier, most of the rooms here have multiple doors, so we can actually go through a door that doesn't exist in the final version of the game to enter the dining room from the southwest side. It definitely feels weird doing it. Next to this room is the area we are looking for though, the kitchen. And after we defeat a few enemies in the kitchen, the legendary chef finally makes an appearance. Granted, all of this was derived from in-game hints in one photo, but I think it's incredible that this ghost is brought to life. He throws his tomato around the room and does a little dance similar to the bowling ghost when he misses. He'll follow you from corner to corner and can be stunned by the water nozzle too. He has the same amount of health as the other portrait ghosts and goes down fairly quickly. It's neat that modders decide to bring this character to life and create what they thought was the most accurate depiction based off the photo that existed. 
Beyond this room, we have the backyard that has the infinite void behind it. Something I talked about in previous videos about how potentially the room behind the backyard and perhaps next to it were different. Standing here was pretty neat honestly. But with this, the beta has come to an end. This region is where the beta allowed the player to explore. There's something really special about this whole thing though. Beyond the incredible work that the modding team did to turn back time and seemingly rebuild something that was lost, it's pretty funny how on theme the restoration of the chef ghost was. We had one photo of the ghost and that was it. And in true Luigi's Mansion spirit, the modders freed this ghost from its static image prison and brought it to life. Quite the opposite of what we're used to doing in Luigi's Mansion, but pretty incredible nonetheless. I hope you enjoyed this trip back in time, and I'll see you all again real soon in my next video. Cheers.